Hey you folks, Quillikeen here and welcome to the second video in our EVE Online guide for complete beginners. In this episode we are going to complete the in-game tutorial which is going to teach us a little bit more about constructing our ship, doing a little bit of combat as well as skills. Starting in the next episode we are going to be looking at career agents and doing some things like mining. Uh, episode 4 will likely be looking at the exploration career stuff, which is totally amazing and awesome. Now, two things, despite we're talking about these different roles, right? Combat stuff, mining stuff, exploration stuff, there are no classes in EVE Online. Any character can do anything. In addition to that, there's no experience points and no levels. The only thing there are are skill points and where you apply them. And at this point in the tutorial, the game would like us to go ahead and um, start some skill training, which you always want to be training skills. So. Um, because of various reasons, the, the old tooltip that was there, but what she wants to do is us to open our character sheet. So we're going to click on our lovely, lovely face over here, and this is going to open up the character sheet, which will not look like that for you. It will look... There we go. It will look more like this. Sorry, I had something collapsed in over here. So here's your character. Here's my lovely uh, 80s action hero, <laughs> terrible figure face over here. We get some information. We get our name when we were born. Uh, we're currently an alpha state clone. That is a free account over here. There's certain things you can, there's a lot of things you can do as alpha. You can play the game for a very long time and be very satisfied as an alpha clone, but you can also upgrade it to an omega clone, which unlocks a few more things. We'll look at those a little bit later. Current system over here, my alliances, so, you know, I'm part of the, uh, the Glente and whatnot, but that doesn't matter too much. There's lots of little tabs to look at, and I do encourage you to go through and look through this. Hey, you can type up your own biography and everything. It's kind of excellent. Lovely. But, for the tutorial, we're supposed to be on the skills tab over here, which is what opens by default normally when you open your character sheet. So Aura says, before we proceed, let's start training a skill. Skill training is vital to your or for your progression, and the skills you choose will prepare you for your path in the stars. Under the skills tab, pick a category and pick a skill you wish to train. I would recommend the category Spaceship Command and the skill also called Spaceship Command. All right, well, I, we may disagree with Aura. I don't know. It's it, we'll, we'll see how it is. So we're gonna hide her for a second and look at the character. So in the skills, there are many, many different categories of skills over here. Spaceship Command is a category of skill, and there are actually 81 different skills in this category. Now you probably won't see all these by default because this little pull down menu is probably set to um, have prerequisites for which is probably a better choice than show everything. Uh, you can also say can train now. So these are the skills I can train currently. But if I go here, I also have prerequisite for a few of these skills. I'd have to buy a skill book to start learning those. We'll talk about that a little bit more in the future. I'm gonna go ahead and shrink this top bar down so that we have a little bit more room to work with over here. We'll shrink the training queue just a little bit so I can talk about things. So again, many different categories of stuff over here and many different skills that you can learn. Now, we are going to get into the nitty gritty of these skills later on when we look at various jobs that we might do, for example, mining or exploration, or in fact, combat. And especially with things like combat, we're gonna look into specific skills when we figure out what kind of weapons we might be using and why you might use different weapons. So um, as a Galente person, uh, we are big fans of small hybrid turrets. As a Kaldari, I think you'd be using, I think missiles or small projectile turrets and so on and so forth. You might start with slightly different skills and your ships might be by default sort of oriented in one way. So what skill do you train? Well, you know what? I'm gonna kind of agree with Aura for now. We're gonna queue up Spaceship Command. So in the Spaceship Command category, there's a Spaceship Command skill over here. And the reason I think she recommends it is because all it does is make all your ships, no matter what kind of ship you pilot, they'll all be slightly better. It's going to improve your ship agility by 2% per skill level. So for every skill that you have in Spaceship Command, your ships will be slightly more agile, helps them turn faster, big implications in combat, but even outside of combat, it's really handy to have a ship that maneuvers a little faster. Now, we already have three levels in the skill. So as a starting character, we started with that. Hey, that's lovely. Um, and we have the ability to train a fourth level. That gray pip over there, we can do it. The, the yellow blocks here, these are Omega only. You can't train fifth level of Spaceship Command unless you have an Omega account. So it's worth noting there, but that's gonna be fine. So I can train the skill. Um, if I mouse over, there's a pop-up window. I can go and hit train level four. And of course, like anything else in the game, you can right click on it and say, hey, add level four to the queue please and thank you. So this skill is actually gonna take one day and 17 hours to train in real time. And this applies whether you're logged in 
or logged out. If you log out and you come back in two days, you will have finished doing this. And that doesn't feel very exciting necessarily. Now, some skills don't take as long. The first level of a skill takes very little time. Second takes more, third takes more so on and so forth. So getting the first few levels in a bunch of different skills is super fast. For example, we already have the first level of Mining Frigate. We could go and get the second level of Mining Frigate. It would only take two hours. So it's a little bit faster. And then if we if we didn't have, if we were just getting the first level of something, it could be like 10 minutes to get the first level of the skill. Now, as an alpha character, once you have queued up a day of stuff, you can't add more things to the queue. If I want to add another skill to this queue, because this is one hour, or one day, 17 hours. If I want to add Mining Frigate, so let's say I try to train level two, does not fit in the training queue. If I cancel this, what I could do, and it remembers my progress. You can see that this square has sort of got a slash through it, because we have some, some progress towards that skill level. If I instead queue up Mining Frigate, and then Spaceship Command, that's fine. Because you, it's only, it, only, it doesn't stop you from adding things that put your queue over a day. It just, once your queue is over a day, it doesn't add, it let you add any more. One of the advantages to upgrading to Omega is that there's no limit to how many skills you can, you can queue up. You could, you could load up like six months worth of skills in here if that's your plan, and that's totally okay. The other advantage, in addition to unlocking more categories of stuff, is that you actually do learn skills twice as fast as well. So there's, Omega is quite nice, and I believe if you do make a new account like this, we got a little pop-up over here, I think your first month is like half price or something like that, if you want to go that route. But don't, you know, you don't have to rush it. You don't need it right away, it's going to be A-OK. -okay. There may also be some unallocated skill points over here. Um, as a new character, you might get some as a bonus. Um, it, depending on how you uh, sign up for your account, you may also have some. Um, you may also have a gift waiting for you. There you go. Here, I've got some bonus skill points waiting for me over here. I think because of the current event that's going on, uh, I do have to be in a station to be able to claim this. So we'll just wait on that. Um, and also, if you do the sign up versus like with the recruit a friend, I think you'll get like seventy five. I think it's 750,000 skill points as a bonus, which is a lot. For example, Spaceship Command over here. Um, oh, it doesn't actually show in this pop-up. Hold on. If I cancel this and I go here, Spaceship Command is 256,000 skill points. So basically, and it, this is like almost two days worth of research, right? So basically with the Recruiter Friend thing, you get like six or seven days worth of free, like of skills acceleration, which is really handy when you start off with. Uh, for now, just so that I have something in the queue, um, I will, uh, you know what, I'll just leave Spaceship Command in there. Just because no matter what I end up flying for the rest of my career in EVE, it'll be handy to have this here. So we'll leave that there. Probably what will happen at some point when we get to like the mining tutorial or the exploration tutorial, I might change my mind and move some things. But we may as well sink some skill points in there while we're waiting. That's going to be okay. All right. So Aura should be pretty happy with that. Excellent. Done. And your skill training is now complete. I will notify you when the skill training has been completed. Now let's go back to the agency and the tutorial. We'll do the next step. And we'll try to go through these a little faster because they will mostly be similar. Uh, we'll activate the next one, measuring the threat. Larger vessels are not always more effective against ship-to-ship -ship combat. The smaller ship is, the more difficult it is for turrets to track it. Warp to the site using warp 2. So we're going to go to the next area. And, and this is very true. Now, the math and the mechanics behind this are not something that you're going to want to get into at this point in EVE Online, but very small ships, ships that have a very small signature, as well as ships that can move, again, you want to be moving relative to the person you're fighting, not, not towards or away, but kind of sideways, which is what orbiting does for it. If your ship is fast, if your ship is small, big giant ships with huge giant guns will not be able to hit you. In fact, it's entirely possible they will literally never be able to hit you at all if they're just trying to use big, giant artillery against you, uh, which is kind of amazing. That's why the amazing thing about EVE Online is even if you're a new player and even if you're just flying small ships, you can still be a massive threat. So we got the Circadian Seeker over here. I'm going to control click it to target it. I'm going to ask to orbit. And then once we're locked in, I'm going to start firing in this guy. Boom. There you go. And I think this, for this encounter here, I think they gave this guy fairly, I don't know, he is hitting me there, but I'm moving mostly towards him at this point. Keep that in mind. Um, so once we start moving a little bit more laterally to him, oh, he's using heat seeking missiles. I don't know if this turret, I, I, I don't know if this tutorial step actually has anything to do with anything other than letting you know, oh, big ships might have a hard time hitting you. 
I guess that is true. Although, big ships can be designed in other ways to um, deal with small little uh, frigates. Like, well, actually, we're flying a corvette here. Um, including things like drones and whatnot. But, again, it, you don't have to worry about that right now. Sort of beyond the point. So we're just, or beyond the topic. Oh, we could dodge a little bit more if we went ahead and turn on the afterburner as well. We went ahead and blew this guy up. He does have some loot behind, but again, it's not going to be worth anything. Um, a few metal straps or a civilian component or something, so I'm not going to worry about it. We've got another ship here, so I'm going to go ahead and control click to lock on. I will orbit. Again, I instead of control clicking, I like it because it's fast. You could just click him, you can right click to lock, or with him selected, you can hit the lock button. There he is. He's locked on now, and we're going to try to close to an orbit. Uh, I've targeted my him with my gun. Pew, 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 pew. I gotta say, these missiles look super cool. I've actually... I don't think I've ever flown a ship that uses missiles. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of tempted to do it just because they look so amazing. Yeah, it's, it's very tempting. So we'll go ahead and shoot this guy. Uh, the other thing, um, I don't think this tutorial covers. There are many different types of damages. Um... For your weapons. Well, there's four different types. There's um, kinetic damage, which is just like you're hitting someone with a bullet directly. There's thermal damage, uh, so burning, burning damage, you know, maybe lasers. There's explosive damage, which is, I believe, what a lot of these missiles do. And there's EM damage, electromagnetic damage, um, which some types of weapons do do. Different types of defenses have different strengths and vulnerabilities versus them. For example, I think shields are quite good against explosive damage, but quite weak against electromagnetic. Again, more advanced than you need to worry about right now, but it's interesting that all this is in here. All right, we got to do the next step of the tutorial. Again, we'll try to burn through these fairly quickly. Skill training completed. So now Aura's going to tell us about the afterburner. It's a module you can turn on and off, and it lets you go places faster. So, oh, she wants me to activate it. So I'm actually going to have to stop this module and then turn it back on. There you go. I think I, I tried turning it on before it turned off completely. And now she wants me to warp this site. It's interesting. It tells us to turn it on, but warping will turn it off again anyway. So, But yeah, it acknowledges that, yep, this is a module that's there. One thing that's interesting about EVE is the game only ticks or processes things once every second. This is one of the reasons it's not a very twitchy game. If you if you do try to do more than one thing in a second, um, it, it'll only take like the last click, basically, of whatever. Well... You, you can sort of do more than one thing in a second as long as they're different things. But if I try to turn the afterburner on, off, on, off, on, off, all in the same second, it's not it's not going to do that. It'll only care about the last click that I put in, basically. Um, so again, it's not... You don't have to freak out in case of emergencies. Flare versus flare combat, it is it can get pretty hairy. But other than that, you know, just breathe. It's okay. All right, sleeper rift, some sort of sleeper gate. We've been spotted. Yeah, all right. So we're going to have to blow up another ship over here. I, at this point of the tutorial, it seems pretty stale. If you double-click on something, which I just did, it will approach. So this starts me moving in the right direction. And again, with it selected, I'm going to say, hey, I would like to lock the target, and I would like to orbit. As soon as the locking is done, which is what that timer is there, we're now locked. I'm going to start shooting. You can increase the speed. There's various things you can do that increases the speed that you can lock onto a target. There's also a maximum range that you can lock onto targets, and that depends very much on your ship as well as a large amount of skills that you might have. Interestingly enough, you can also you can do the invert. You can actually start screwing up other people's ability to lock onto you. Uh, oh, I'll put the afterburner back on for the combat here. Um, there's electronic warfare stuff that you can do, which makes it so that um, ships can't lock onto you from very far away. They'll have to get very close before they can lock onto you. Not only that, I think you can impact the speed at which they lock onto you. And um, you can do it in such a way that you're, you're screwing up enemy ships, so they won't be able to necessarily lock onto any of your sh the, any of ships in your fleet properly. And that's another thing that you can do with a relatively small, simple, and cheap ships and participate in these massive uh, fleet battles, right? You've got these huge battleships dueling against each other in space, and you're just here with a little frigate screwing up the enemy ships so they can't lock onto your, your ships. And meanwhile, you're small and light, and the big ships won't be able to hit you as well. On the other hand, an organized fleet will probably have other ships that are built to deal with little scrappy dudes like yourself over here. Looks like we're having a hard time actually staying within the uh, the orbit range that I've selected here. I think this guy's moving around fairly quickly as well. One thing we might want to do is we might want to explicitly do an approach, which is what I'm going to do here. We're going to turn and try to fly directly to him to try to close the range, and then I'll once again go and hit an orbit command at that point, because I'm trying to close in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so moving faster, faster makes you harder to track and makes it easier to keep the enemy at your optimal range. 
So I'm going to try to do that. There's a button actually that's quite handy here, which is the keep at range. Um, and again, you can right click and say, listen, I would like to keep this target within 5,000 meters. Not necessarily set up an orbit, but we'll move directly towards it or slightly or away from it or whatever as need be. There we go. We're closing in, so we're going to hit with a little bit more accuracy here. Just try to finish the battle a little bit faster. There we go. Let's go back into an orbit behavior now. Now that we've actually closed in to a reasonable way. Yeah, we don't have to worry about losing these guys. So we got our shields, we got our armor, we got our structures. Shield takes a little bit of damage. There we go. More bounty. No lootables, even if we wanted to. Um, now we're going to upgrade our ship. Excellent. Locate a station in space, right click on it, and choose dock. So our stations are these little squares. So I'm going to right click on this and choose dock. So unlike the first time we did this in the previous video, I'm not manually aligning or warping and then manually docking. I'm just saying dock. So my ship's going to align, it's going to warp, and then once we get there, it'll automatically dock. Very, very, very handy dandy. So somewhere out over there. We're just aligning right now. And yeah, we will be, we did take a little, quick little peek last video at our fitting screen over here, which is what's on our ship. But this next step, we're going to be working it with it some more. We're going to be changing some components on our ship. Do, 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 Just got to arrive. It's interesting if there was a timer for this rather than just distance. Not that warping ever takes long, but I'm impatient. All right, there's a lot of stuff in space over here. Some people have been... This is, again, this is a massively multiplayer game. Other people are out there doing stuff, leaving notes to each other. I don't know what, what the deal is, but there you go. We're going to dock. We'll talk in a, in a future video. We'll be talking about all this different stuff in the overview, what these different colors mean, and so on and so forth. For now, in the tutorial, just keep ignoring it. There we go. All right, once we have docked, open the engine seat and go to the next tutorial. We will do that. Activate the next tutorial. And Aura. There we go. In the fitting window, locate your primary weapon in your high slot. Okay, so there's a button over here for fitting. So this is where you fit your ship or structure with weapons and equipments to configure it for a chosen role. I don't know why they use the, they chose the word fitting, but there it is. If uh, you ever want to see what other people do for their ships, you can always Google like your ship name and then fit or fitting, and you can see what other people are doing in terms of uh, designing their ship. So we want to open this. And what Aura wants us to do is she wants us to remove the modules in our high slot. So ships have different slots for modules, and they have a high power slot, mid power slots, and low power slots over here. Different ships will have different amounts of slots in each of these various categories. Our little starter ship, at least the Velator, and I think your starting um, Corvette will be the same, has two high, two mid, and two low over here. So Aura wants us to remove the two things in our high slot over here. So we can do it, as always, by right-clicking if we want, and we can unfit. So we will do that. Boop. So now it's empty. Look, it actually removes itself from the model too, which is cool. The other thing you can do is you can hit this little button right over here, unfit module. And there you go. Another thing has been removed over there. Uh, she wants us to leave the afterburner in there. With the fitting window open, click the inventory button. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to leave this open for a second. Here's our inventory button. Now, the inventory window has uh, several different things going on in it. Over here, this is the ship we're piloting, right? It's highlighted in green. This is our ship. And with this selected, this is our ship's inventory. Remember, we collected some metal scraps in the first episode of things. There's also the ship hangar. If we had any ships docked here at the space station, they would show up in the ship hangar. Currently, there's only one thing in here, highlighted in green. This is the ship we're flying. But you could have many different ships all parked at the space station. We then have an item hangar. So this is loot. These are items that are stored in, I don't know, our locker here on the space station. They're not on our ship. They're just in the locker. Now, she would like me to go and fit the highlighted turrets, which is these light electron blasters. So we have two, you can see the quantity over here, two light electron blasters. She would like them to fit, like us to fit them onto our ship. We can do that by clicking and dragging. We can actually just drag it anywhere in the window here, and it'll go ahead and drop it into the appropriate slot, which is in this term, a high slot. We can actually, if we open this window a little bit bigger, we can see that these are all high slot items. There's the Gatling gun and the miner that are removed, and here's the other electron blaster. So we're gonna go ahead and drop that onto our ship. Excellent. Whereas before we had a single gun, now we have two, and these are also a lot better. We also have ammo. So these weapons here that I'm equipping require ammunition. So we have some ammunition for it here, these iron charges. So if we grab this and drag it onto our ship, 
what it's going to do, and you'll see it there. There we go. These two guns have been loaded with these ammo. This ammo. Uh, looks like each gun can hold 200 bullets. We had 1,000. We have 600 left. Um, I think her advice was also, hey, why don't you take these iron chargers, the rest of them, and put them in your ship's inventory. So if I drag it over to my ship, so my ship's cargo bay has those metal scraps as well as the iron chargers. Now my guns can reload in combat. If they run out of bullets, they will reload from the inventory. Before we leave, I'm actually going to go ahead and grab the last two things over here. I'm going to go and put them in my ship's inventory as well, because I think we're going to be leaving this station soon as part of the tutorial. So I'm going to bring everything with me. Anything you see with the word civilian is basically worthless, can't really be sold, and you're never really going to want to use them long term. But um, I'm going to bring them with me anyway, just in case. So I can go ahead and close this window. And I can close this one. By the way, if you're on Windows or on the Mac, I guess, you can hit Control w to close a window like that as well. So she wants us to go and uh, start the next tutorial step, which we will do. Training. Battle in the Ruins. So we have to go somewhere. We have to undock. Keep in mind, this is our mission here. It's saying get the space. Hey, do that by undocking. I'm going to click this button right over here, which is the same as having hit that big undock button over there. So now we're feeling, now we're feeling badass. We're going to do so much more damage than before. Now, we didn't actually look at the stats of these various weapons. That's something we will look at later when, uh, when we're going to be making our own fittings and tuning our ships for various behaviors. But right now, we know this is going to be pretty good. So, Battle in the Ruins, combat. We are going to warp to this location by clicking there. So our ship's automatically going to align. So our destination is somewhere out there. And again, you don't actually have to worry about hitting a planet while you warp. Vroomph. There we go. So we're closing in. We'll have to do one more round of fighting. I know. The tutorial, I gotta say, gets a little bit samey by the end of it. I think they probably could have compressed it by dropping a couple of steps, if I'm honest. Um, but uh, definitely not this one. Being able Teaching how to equip guns, very nice. So we got a couple of foes over here, a couple of sentry towers. Now here's the thing, if I mouse over these guns, my optimal range has changed. Look, the optimal range for these guns is 1,760 meters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the sentry, I'm going to orbit, set the default, I'm going to change the default, I'm going to set it to back to like 1,000 meters over here. So that's my default orbit. Excellent. I'm going to go ahead and control click both of these, and I'm going to say I want to orbit the first sentry tower, and I'm going to start shooting. Now, these weapons are much shorter range. I've clicked on both of these, by the way. And the hotkeys for these are F1 and F2, so I could also use F1 and F2. You can see both my guns over here in the top right corner underneath the sentry tower that I'm targeting. Both these guns are shooting at that tower. I could split my attacks. I could have one gun shooting at one person, one gun shooting at the other. But that would be bad. And the reason that would be bad, generally speaking, there may be reasons that you want to do it. The reason is, um, if you split your guns, and at some point you end up with two half-dead enemies. Two half-dead enemies do as much, still do their full damage. So there's a longer period of time where you're going, to be, you're going to be getting shot by two people at the same time. Whereas if you focus fire, you put all your guns on one target, you kill that one as soon as possible, then you only have one other person left shooting at you. So it's much better. It takes you just as long to kill everyone, but you take less damage. Plus, this lets us make sure that we're optimizing you know, our, our, our optimal range and things like that by just focusing on the one that we're in optimal range with. Ow. I actually don't know if um, missiles can miss. I really know very little about missiles. There we go, we've blown up another one. Oh, there's a secret eluder over here. I'm gonna double click on them. I tend to do that first. I double click so we start approaching directly. And then I'm like, okay, we'll do that. If I try to lock on here, I'm not gonna be able to, it's too far away. My maximum target lock on range on this ship and with my skills is 26 kilometers. So I have to wait till I'm within 26 kilometers. It's 27. And as soon as I'm within 26, this should light up here. It's on target range. Oh, actually, I don't know if I have to refresh it, or it could be that just it was a rounding, because I was at probably at 26.8, and I needed to be within 26.3 or something like that. So that may have been it. Anyway, I've locked on. I'm going to start shooting. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this, to, this weapon onto the other one. There you go. Both my weapons are now on one button. So I just have to hit this one button. So if you drag modules, you can combine them. There's also a little handy button over here. So this allows us ungroup our weapons. Oh, I can't actually do it while they're shooting. But you can ungroup them again, 
and so on and so forth. I tend to group my weapons on these small frigates because you don't have a lot of weapon guns. They tend to be the same gun and you tend to want to target the same thing. But you might be in a situation where you've got a bigger ship. Maybe you've got a combination of long range and short range weapons for different things. So you may want to organize your groups differently. But here, it's quite handy to combine these two. Oops, turn on the afterburner and make sure we're on orbit mode over here. And we're just going to go ahead and blow this guy up. But yeah, we have to get quite a bit closer before we can start hitting this guy accurately. If you are playing Galente, so small hybrid turrets are Galente's weapons of choice. And there are two variants of small hybrid turrets. There are blasters, which is what I'm using here. Blasters do really big amount of damage, but you have to be very close. The other thing that the, the small hybrid turrets they use are rail guns. Rail guns have much, much longer range. They don't do as much damage, but they have much longer range. So which one is better? Well, I don't know. Depends on what you're doing. For just fighting these sort of NPC mobs, I'm quite a big fan of like short range, high damage weapons, mostly because they're not that intimidating, generally speaking. So I just want to kill them as quickly as possible. Plus, how intimidating can something be if it's dead? We've got another target here. Double click to start moving towards it. I'm going to control click to start targeting it because we're within range. And then I'll say, OK, start orbiting. And maybe I'll save some ammo here because we have very little accuracy at 20 kilometers. Because again, if we take a look, our optimal range is 1700 and the fall off is another 3300 so really like once i'm within say five kilometers 5000 meters then I'll, I'll turn it on i'll still miss a good number of shots but i'll have some chance to hit i won't literally just be throwing away money again bullets are really cheap so it's not much of a problem but yeah may as well you know token effort here let's take a moment to reload if i right click on these i can reload all my guns does take the guns offline for five seconds here, but I figured I'd had the time. You can also do, I believe, Control R is the hotkey for reloading. It's always a good habit after every combat to go ahead and reload all your weapons so that when you get into the next combat, you'll start off full. So I'm missing a lot, missing a lot. There you go, starting to hit as I close in. I don't have to get to 1700, but again, if I get to within 1700, then my miss chance will go very low. Oh my god, there's tons more opponents. So again, I'm going to double click. I can't lock onto them yet. I'm just going to double click so I start moving towards them. I do have my afterburner on. I'm going to hit Control R to reload because I may as well. I got nothing else to do right now. That's a quite a bit of an en enemies over there, but I think we'll be okay. Um, so we'll prep. We'll tell okay orbit, and yeah, the lock target just lit up. So I'm going to hit that because we're within range. In fact, I'm going to go Control click, Control kick. I'm going to lock multiple targets. I'm just going to shoot at the closest one. I'll wait until we're a little closer just to avoid burning ammo for no reason. I'm going to try to lock onto the fourth target. I'm not going to be allowed to. My current skill slash ship slash whatever only allows me to lock three targets at a time. But it's very easy to get a skill so you can lock more target. Not that there's that much point or reason to lock more than this. It's just, I find it convenient. So, all right, we're closing in a little bit here. We're going to start firing at this guy. Boom, boom, boom. He's a larger ship as well, so it's going to be easier for us to hit him. Ship size is a big part of the game. Let's, um, okay, he's dead. So the next ship here, I'm going to hit F1 to start shooting it. I'm also going to say, hey, I'd like to orbit this guy. If I take a quick moment, if I open my ship fitting, under defense, uh, not defense, under targeting, there's a value here that's signature radius. It's effectively how big your ship is and how easy it is to hit. So different ships have different signature radii, um, and that will make them easier or harder to hit. Uh, again, range, um, lateral speed, all those things come into play. You don't have to like care about those numbers right now, but it is very interesting again that it's there. And later on when you're trying to be an expert and be like the best PvP -er, you're really gonna want to sort of like min max those numbers just to take advantage of as much stuff as possible here. But for now, we're just gonna keep blowing up these big ships. And this is slightly too overlong, in my opinion, tutorial. On the other hand, one of the reasons I think they may give you this many targets, each one of these ships is giving you money. They all have a bounty. So these bounties, this ship here has a 10,000 isk bounty. Every time we kill one of these, it gets added to our bounty queue. Bounties get paid off at regular intervals. So you don't get the money instantly, but you'll get it within probably a few minutes. Um, and it'll just accumulate all the bounties. So the next time we get a bounty tick, we'll get 30 or $40,000 or, or whatever it is, depending on how the timing worked out. All right, everything's been cleared up. We do have some extra cargo here. There we go, civilian afterburner. Again, anything with the word civilian is basically has no value, but I will give you a, a slight hint here. Um, if you can, 
collect an, another civilian afterburner or two, it'll actually make a, a step in a, in a coming career thing slightly easier. I'm going to see if I can snag a second one. I guess we have one on this ship, because so I have a civilian afterburner equipped. Um, just in case you were wondering, equipping more than one afterburner does not help. So I'm going to pick up another one over here. There you go. And I won't bother again. They basically have no value, but that's fine. I'm going to close this, do the next agency mission, and now your career awaits. So this mission is going to ask us to travel or to to travel to a place where a career agent will be. So we're going to go and and complete the step of traveling there in this episode. So she says in the agency, go to the agents and missions tab. OK, then go to the career agents tab. Now, there's mission agents and career agents, and the way they work is fairly similar. Career agents are basically mission agents that are sort of more tutorial. Um, they will introduce you to various game concepts, and career agents also give you free stuff. Lots of money, some free ships that are appropriate for the various roles, some, some various modules and various things like that. Do There's five different career agents. There's business, exploration, industry, and military, and an advanced military. Do each one of these. First of all, it's a great way to learn. Secondly, oh my god, you're going to get so much free stuff, it's amazing. Um, I think you can actually do each one of these three times each. Uh, and it may be worth doing that, um, just to just start things off. At the very least, do each one of them at least once. Um, because, yeah, it will really get you set off. Each one of these happens to be in the same area. They're all in the Couster system which is three jumps away, if we see here. And specifically in the Couser system, they're all at the Federal Navy Academy. Where are we is a great question. We're going to answer that next time. Hint, we're in the Sturpin system. So next episode, we're going to talk about navigation. We're going to get our way over here, how to navigate the map of the galaxy. Check it out. Here's we are. Here, here, here's we are. Yes, good English. We're in the Durpin system. Zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. These are all stars that you can visit all over the freaking place. Um, not only that, but <laughs> there's actually a bunch of stars that will, or systems that will not be even listed on here because they're only accessible through wormholes and things like that. There's so much stuff to do in this game. It's, it's kind of obscene, actually. It's kind of amazing. So um, we are going to be doing a travel. Oh, it's actually, we're going to be going to the Couster system right over here. But that's what we're going to do next time, folks. And we're going to start on the mining agent specifically. Um, which actually I say that I think it's the oh industry industry career path over here which is going to teach us about mining it's also going to teach us about processing stuff as well as using blueprints to create items very exciting stuff and then I think after that we'll do exploration then after that maybe we'll do some more combat or something we'll see how it goes thanks for watching folks I'm going to see you guys next time bye bye